Welcome to a new guitar tutorial. For years I was thinking about buying a 12 string acoustic guitar and finally I did it. And now I have lots of fun revisiting some songs I transcribed and practiced years ago, now playing with the right amount of strings. And, and one of these songs is Wholehearted by Extreme, which we'll have a look on in this tutorial. If you're interested in sheet music of the song, you can go to my Patreon page. There you can download a full transcription of the parts I will show you in this tutorial, including tabs and regular notation. And if you enjoyed the lesson, please hit subscribe, ring the bell, leave a like and drop me a line in the comments. In the original recording, the guitar is tuned down a half step to E flat, which makes it a bit easier to play because there's less tension on the strings. But I wasn't keen on to tune down all the 12 strings, so this tutorial is in standard tuning. The song starts with an, with an open D chord, so we have the open D string, or the open D strings in this case, second fret of the G string, third fret of the B string, and second fret of the high E string. And this chord shape is moved around on the neck, so the second chord of the intersection is the same chord shape, only moved up two steps, so we have an, an E major chord but with a D in the bass. Then on the, on the second two bars, these two chords are repeated. And at the end we're playing an arpeggio starting on the high E string, going down to the B and the G string. So the first four bars go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two. Then these two, two chords are repeated one more time. But on the, on the second bar we are we're starting a strumming pattern. Adding one and two and three and four and E. And for the last two bars of the, of the intersection we're adding another chord. Here we're going up to the to an F major chord, so the same chord shape now on the fifth fret. F major chord with a D in the bass. So the, the last two bars go like this. And a complete intersection one more time. Two, three, four. One, two. And then we're starting with the main riff, which is also the camping part for the for the verse section. And this riff goes like this. Starting on the A and the D string, we have the open A string and the, and the fifth fret of the, of the D string, and we're doing a hammer on up to the seventh fret of the D string. And then we're doing a pull off down to the, to the fifth fret and a pull off down to the open D string. And then we're going down to the third fret of the A string. And we're ending on an A power chord, so we have the open A string and the second fret of the of the D and the G string. After that, we're going up to the fifth fret of the of the G and the B string, and then we're doing a hammer on with our second finger on the sixth fret of the of the G string. Then the seventh fret of the D string, and then we're barring the seventh fret of the G and the B string. This lick is repeated, and then a third time, 
but instead of barring the G and the and the B string on the seventh fret, we're going down to the fifth fret of the of the D string the last time. So this complete part. the complete riff to this point. Then our lick on the A and the D string is repeated. But now we're not ending on an A power chord, now we're ending on a D power chord, so we have the open D string and the second fret of the G string. And in the last bar of this riff, there's a, there's a little difference how I play it and, and the way Nuno Bettencourt is playing it. As I mentioned before, I transcribed the, the, the song 20 years ago and, the, and you, I had the possibility to check out a YouTube video where Nuno is playing the song. And so I always thought he's using the open D string, doing a hammer on to the second fret of the D string and then the G string, but actually he's playing the, the same notes but starting on the on the fifth fret of the A string, which is also a D, and then doing hammer on up to the seventh fret, and then the open G string. I'm used to doing it with the open D string, so I'm, I'm staying playing it that way, but if you want to do it in the original way, you have to, to use the, the fifth and the seventh fret of the A string. So this complete last bar goes like this. So we're starting either on the open D string, hammering the, the second fret of the D string, or the, the uh, fifth fret of the A string, doing a hammer on to the seventh fret of the A string. Then there's the open G string, then we're doing a hammer on starting on the third fret of the A string up to the fifth fret of the A string. Sorry. And then the, the open D string. And then we're doing a hammer on from the second fret to the third fret of the A string. And this hammer on is repeated. And then there's a pull off down to the second fret, down to the open A string. And the lick ends on the on the third fret of the of the Louis string, and then an A power chord one more time. So this complete lick, or in the original way. This is the, the main riff and also the comping part for the verse. So one more time, this complete part. And then the section is repeated. It's played two times as an intro riff and then another two times as the comping part for the for the verse. Then we're in the pre-chorus section and the pre-chorus part goes like this. Starting once again on this on this open D chord, which is moved up and down the neck. So we're starting with the D chord, and then we're moving this chord shape up to the to the ninth fret. So we have an, an A major chord with a D in the bass. Then we're moving this chord shape down to the seventh fret. Now we have a G major chord with a D in the bass, and then we're going to this chord, which is an, uh, again an, an A major chord with D in the bass. Now we're barring the, 
the fifth fret of the high E and the B string and the sixth fret of the of the G string. And then we're going going down to the to the D chord again. And the complete part goes like this. One more time. to an A7 chord. Here we have the open A string, a second fret of the D string, open G string, second fret of the B string and the open E string. Then we're going to this chord which is kind of A sus chord. We have once again the open A string, the fourth fret of the, of the D string, open G string, third fret of the B string and the open E string. And then we're going up to the to this chord. Now we have the open A string, fifth fret of the D string, open G string again, fifth fret of the B string, and the open E string. And then we're going back down to the A7 chord. And this complete part is played twice, so we're repeating. in the chorus section and the chorus starts with this open G chord. We have the third fret of the low E string, the second fret of the A string, open D, open G string and the third fret of the B string and the high E string. So we're starting on the G string and then we're only changing the, the root notes of the chord. So we have this G chord, then we have the open A string as the root, so we have G chord with an A in the bass. Then we're going to the, to the second fret of the A string, so we have a, a G chord with, with a B in the bass. nine chords so we have this uh, third fret of the a string the the second fret of the d string the open g string and the third fret of the of the b and the high string again and then as an interlude we're we're going to the d chord again and moving it up to the two frets to the e chord One more time, this complete part. Then we're repeating the part with the G chord. And then we're going to the D and the E chord again. But now we're playing it like in the intro of the song. And then there's a, a little picking part. So we're starting on the on the third fret of the D string. We have the open G string and the third fret of the B string. So we're picking the D string, the G string. Then the B string, then the G string, B string again, and the G string again. And 
then we're going down to the second fret of the of the D string, but we, we leave the third finger on the third fret of the B string. And we're picking the D string and the G and the B string again. And then there's a hammer on from the second fret of the D string up to the third fret. Pull off down to the second fret and then a pull off down to the open D string. And this lick ends on the third fret of the A string. So this complete part. And this this part is repeated. And one more time the complete chorus section. And then we're we're back in the in the main riff, which is played as an interlude of the song. Then there's another verse part, which is played in the same way as before. Another pre-chorus part, which is in the, played in the same way. And then there's another chorus part, and the only difference is that now the chorus is played twice with a, with a short part in between. We're starting in the same way as we did before. So the, the, the little interlude starts again on the D string and moves this chord shape up and down the neck. We're starting on the open D, uh, D chord, moving this chord shape up to the 9th fret again, and then down to the 7th fret, and then back down to the 2nd fret. One more time. And after that there's a, a, another regular chorus section. And after the chorus part we're doing this picking lick again. And we're ending on this open D chord. This was the complete rhythm guitar part of Wholehearted by Extreme. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please hit subscribe if you haven't, ring the bell, leave a like, drop me a line in the comments and I hope to see you next time. Bye.